Hello Grade 6! Welcome! Welcome to the STEM Lockdown Digital School and welcome to your Grade 6 English First Additional Language lesson. Today is a listening and speaking lesson. My name is Fiona Beale and I am your Grade 6 First Additional Language teacher. Hello! Are you wondering what we'll be doing in our listening and speaking lesson today? Well, you'll work from the week 3 and 4 CAPS curriculum for listening and speaking. We'll start off and you'll look at a picture of a bird and describe it. After that, you'll watch a video on birds and take notes. You'll take part in a discussion about birds. You'll play a language game on the topic of birds. You'll listen to descriptions of different birds and identify them. You'll identify similarities and differences relating to birds. You'll also follow instructions and draw and label a bird. You'll identify different parts of the body of a bird. And you'll look at vocabulary from today's lesson. So by the end of today's lesson, you'll know quite a lot about birds, right? Look at this beautiful bird. Don't you think it's gorgeous? Where do you think this bird is at the moment? That big fence seems to indicate that it could be in a zoo or a bird, bird cage of some kind. Let's describe this bird. How would you describe its colouring? It's got an amazing beak, hasn't it? It almost looks unreal. And interesting markings on the beak. I don't know if I would like to be pecked by that beak. The beak almost looks as big as the bird. How would you describe its beak? It almost looks as though it's stuck on with black glue, doesn't it? I wonder why it's got such a big beak. Look at its claws. Those nails look quite sharp. How would you describe its claws? They're an interesting colour, aren't they? Would you say this bird's brightly coloured or would you say it's black with some beautiful colours on it? How would you describe it? Look at its breast. It's got a yellow breast. Pale yellow breast with a bit of red around it. Very attractive. Its feathers look interesting. Do you think it's got colour under its feathers as well? Or just do you think it's black everywhere? Well, this bird, do you know what it's called? It's called a toucan. And it's the kind of bird you probably won't find in South Africa, but you would find maybe in a zoo or some place where animals are on display. Hello everybody! In this video, we're going to learn about our friends, the birds. They're so diverse and there are so many colours and shapes, it's fun to learn about them. For example, this tiny little hummingbird doesn't look anything like this huge ostrich. And these penguins don't look much like this peacock with its large fan-shaped tail. Well, they may not look alike, but they're all birds and have many things in common. Birds are oviparous, which as you know, means that they reproduce by laying eggs. The females lay the eggs in nests, in the rocks or on the ground, and with the heat of their bodies, they incubate the eggs until the little chicks hatch. Birds don't have teeth, they have beaks or bills, and these can be very different depending on what that species of bird feeds on. They breathe with their lungs that are connected to bags full of air called air sacs and these help birds to fly. Also, nature, which is very clever, 
has made their bones hollow. So they weigh very little, and because of this, it's much easier for them to fly. The skin of birds is covered with feathers. These protect them from the cold and heat. Birds have four limbs. The back ones are legs, and the front ones are wings. Together, the wings and feathers are essential for them to be able to fly. And in some cases, so they can swim. Birds are terrestrial, and most of them can fly. Can you think of any birds that can't fly? That's right. Penguins and ostriches are two species of birds that cannot fly. Birds have four types of feathers. Those that cover the whole body. Flight feathers in the wings that help them to fly. Down feathers which cover the chest and belly and maintain the body at a constant temperature. And tail feathers that help guide the bird's body like a rudder on a boat. Birds can be classified into several groups according to what they eat. Herbivores feed on plants and grasses. Their beaks are short and strong and can crush seeds and grains. When they only eat grains, they're called granivores. Carnivorous birds hunt and eat other animals. Using their strong, curved beaks, Within the group of carnivores, there are insectivores that only eat insects and piscivores that only feed on fish. These birds have pointed beaks that are long and sharp to help them catch the fish. Remember, birds that eat fish are called piscivorous. The last group Omnivorous birds includes pigeons and hens, and they eat almost anything. So remember, birds are oviparous, which means they reproduce by laying eggs. Their mouths are beaks or bills, and they breathe with their lungs. Their skin is covered with feathers, and depending on the food they eat, they can be herbivorous, carnivorous, or omnivorous. So, now you know a lot more about birds. Goodbye everybody, and don't forget to subscribe to Happy Learning! That was quite an informative video, wasn't it? I'm sure that you know a lot more about birds than when we first started the lesson and we had to discuss the bird in the photograph. Let's discuss what we learnt in the video. Which bird did you like the most in the video? Yes, I'm listening. Okay, I quite liked the hummingbird. I thought that hummingbird was rather cute. Can you name any of the other birds mentioned in the video? They showed a lot of birds, but they didn't mention all their names. Can you mention, remember any of the names? Um, I'm trying to think myself, but I'm listening to what you say first. What do you say? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, um, I th I'm remembering honey birds. Hummingbirds, I should say, ostriches, penguins, peacocks, flamingos. I think those were the five that I noticed them saying. Did you notice any f more than that? What do birds eat? I found that quite interesting, finding out that there are five different ways that birds eat, five different types of birds according to what they eat. 
Can you remember what they are? I'm listening. Yes. Okay. So there's a carnivore that eats meat, like the birds of prey. There's omnivore that eats meat and grains and other things. Then there is the grannivore, just eats grain. The piscivore eats fish and seafood. And the herbivore, what does the herbivore eat? Plants and shrubs. Good, good. Can you name five parts of a bird's body after seeing that video? What, what can you remember? A bill and beak, legs, wings, cover feathers. I didn't realize that birds have got four types of feathers, did you? Wing feathers, tail, and even a breast, that part of the front that's often colorful. What do hollow bones and air sacs have to do with birds flying? I thought that it was interesting to uh, be shown why birds can fly so well. Their hollow bones make them very light and so they, ease, they can fly much easier than we would be able to fly. And then they also have lungs that are connected to air sacs that give them a lot of air while they're flying. Very interesting. Let's play a language game. That video gave us some interesting vocabulary. Can you match the words in the left column with their meanings in the right column? See if you recognize these words from the video. Oviparous. Do you remember that word? Terrestrial. What does that mean? Incubate. What is meant by incubate? Piscivorous. What does that mean? Warm-blooded. Right. Now let's look at the meanings. They're all jumbled, but let's read them first. To maintain a body, a constant body temperature. B. Likes to eat fish. C. Produces young by laying eggs. D. Sits on eggs so that they hatch. And E. A type of bird that stays primarily on the ground. Can you match the words in the left column with their meaning? Just write down the numbers and the letters. Right, are you finished? Great. Then look at the let's look at the answers. Let's look at the answers. So you had to match the words in the left column with the meanings in the right column. Is this what you got? Oviparous means produces young by laying eggs. Good. Terrestrial means E. A type of bird that stays primarily on the ground. Got that? Number three, incubate. Incubate means sits on eggs so that they hatch. 3D. Number four, piscivorous. What does that mean? Likes to eat fish. Did you get that? Number five, warm-blooded. A. Maintains a constant body temperature. Did you get all those correct? 1C, 2E, 3D, 4B, 5A. Well done! In a minute, we'll start listening to some descriptions of birds, seven birds, and they are all found in South Africa. We're going to use a flow chart again today. You'll recognize this because we've used it before. I would like you to copy this flow chart down 
in your book or on your piece of paper birds 1 to 7 and leave a space in between each one so that you can fill in information. You do that now while I'm talking. Then when I start reading about the birds, I'd like you to make a note of what its name is and secondly, what category it falls into as far as eating goes. Remember we named those five different kinds, carnivore, herbivore, etc. Right, you got it. Are you finished your flow chart? Great. Are you ready to listen? Good. Then let's get started. We're going to play a guessing game today called What Am I? Each bird is going to read a description of themselves to you and you need to guess what the bird is. Okay, ready to start. This bird says, I have a compact body with a large head and a short neck. My beak is short, strong and curved. The two sections of my beak are very strong and are used to break fruit and seeds into smaller pieces. I am a granny vole. I am brightly colored and my relatives are also multicolored. I make a great pet because I can be trained to talk. I can also live for a long time, more than 50 years. What am I? Can you guess what that bird is? And do you remember what it eats or what it's classified as when it eats? I'm going to show you a picture to help you. Right, next bird. I am a large, powerfully built bird with a heavy head and a beak. Some people call me a bird of prey, but I prefer to call myself a carnivore. I eat meat, and I do not eat any type of plant matter. Sometimes I eat small animals, including rats, mice, rabbits, squirrels, snakes and fish, lizards, birds and more. Don't worry, I don't eat people. I have very good eyes, 8 to 10 times better than your eyes, and a very large hooked beak for ripping flesh from my prey. I have strong muscular legs and powerful talons. What am I? Can you guess? Can you guess the name of the bird and also what group it falls into for eating. Let me show you a picture. Right, good. Let's go on with our guessing game. Listen to what this bird says. I am a large colourful pheasant. I am blue and green, but I have an iridescent tail. Do you know what that word means? Iridescent means luminous when it's looked at from different angles. I'm very proud of my tail feathers because they spread out in a distinctive train that is more than 60% of my total body length. They seem to have eye markings of blue, gold, red and other hues on them. People say that I shouldn't look so beautiful because I'm a male, but I love the way I look. I'm a terrestrial bird. I don't fly. I'm also an omnivore. I eat plants, fruit, seeds, flower petals, ants, ticks, insects, locusts, ants. I said ants before, right? Bread and other scraps in the garden and forests. What am I? Can you guess? There's a picture. The next bird says, I have a large head, a short neck and an elongated body. I'm usually black and white in color. My tail is short, stiff and wedge shaped. My legs and webbed feet are set far back on my body, which allows me to walk upright just like you. I am terrestrial and I am a piscivore. 
I mostly eat fish and other sea creatures. Don't try and sneak up on me. I have excellent sight and hearing. What am I? Can you guess? And did you notice which eating category it falls under? Great. What am I? You won't see much of me during the day because I am a nocturnal bird. By the way, I am very wise. I should actually be king of the birds. What do I look like? Well, I have feathered talons, a large head with a short hooked beak, large eyes set forward, and a fluffy plumage. A plumage is the word for a covering of feathers. My plumage allows me to fly noiselessly. I am a carnivore. I like to eat insects, small mammals like hares and rabbits, and other smaller birds. What am I? Did you get the name of that bird and the eating group? Here's the image. The next bird says, I am the world's largest bird. I am terrestrial and I don't fly. I have long legs and a long neck that protrudes from my round body. Males have bold black and white colouring that they use to attract the females in my species. I am the only bird that has two toes on each foot. I am an omnivore. I also have the largest eyes of all the land animals. I eat both vegetation and meat. Although I prefer plants, especially roots, seeds and leaves, I also eat locusts, lizards, snakes and rodents. What am I? What do you think? Here's a clue. And our last bird says, I am a large bird with a long neck, stick-like legs and pink or reddish feathers. I have webbed pink feet with three toes. I have a large hooked bill with a black tip that is curved down. I think I'm very graceful. I am an omnivore. I like to wade in the water looking for food to eat. If you want to be pink like me, you must eat some of the things I eat. Small bits of algae, plant material, insects, brine shrimp and other foods. By the way, I am a good flyer as well. What am I? There's a clue. Okay, do you get all that down? Well, let's see if you manage to get the names of the birds. Bird 1 was a parrot. Bird 2 was an eagle. Bird 3 was a peacock. Bird 4 was a penguin. Bird 5 was an owl. Bird 6 was an ostrich. Bird 7 was a flamingo. Did you get all those? Good. And what about the eating categories? The parrot is a granivore, the eagle is a carnivore, the peacock is an omnivore, the penguin is a piscivore, the owl is a carnivore, the ostrich is the herbivore, and the flamingo is an omnivore. How did you do? Great! Now let's just look at those birds again and show you the name this time. There's the parrot. That's the eagle. There's the peacock. There's the penguin. There's the owl. There's the ostrich. And lastly, there's the flamingo. Right. Now you'll remember that last week we did quite a lot of describing to get you into the habit of 
describing using your five, sense and five senses. So let's have another practice now, just an oral practice of describing this bird. Do you remember what kind of bird this is? Right. So first of all, what is its name? So just say it out orally. This is a, and give the name of the bird. Then mention what group it falls into or under for its eating habits. Is it a piscivore or a herbivore? Right. Say that in a, a full sentence. Right. Then go on to describing it and mention at least five of the body parts and describe them. Use adjectives. Use your five senses. Talk about what you can see as you look at it. Look at that curved neck and the curved beak. And look at the pink feathers and, and the very thin legs. See which senses you can use for that bird. If you had to touch it, what would it feel like? If you had to hear it in the morning as it swooped down into the water, what would it be saying? So describe it. And then to round it off, mention what you like about it. Great. That's just a practice activity because this week is all about describing and about information text. And today we've done a lot of describing. So I want you to get into the habit of describing. Right, you got that. I'd like you to draw this eagle with me. Let's analyze the eagle's body parts and draw one together. Ready? Let's start with that little drawing. What do you think that is? Draw it. Did you think it was its hooked beak, perhaps? Yes, it was its hooked be beak. Now let's draw its head. Right, let's go on and start drawing the wing and the shape of the body. Got that? Now let's start drawing the cover, the cover feathers. Right, got that? Good. Let's finish off those feathers and go down towards the legs. Good. So now we're finishing off the feathers completely and starting to draw the feet or the claws. adding on the tail feathers and look at those claws or talons. They are curved and, and powerful. Let's draw those. And now we've got the eyes and the shape of the beak showing where the bottom and the top are and nails on the claws. Right, 
right, you've got all that. You've got your eagle. Good. Are you ready to label your eagle now? We're going to label them after this. So today you have listened to a description of an eagle and you have drawn an eagle. You've also seen an eagle on a video. Now it's time to label your drawing. Let's look at the vocabulary. Strong talons, hooked beak, sharp eyes, long wings, beautiful feathers, strong limbs. Do you see that I've just added an adjective to each body part? When you label the eagle now, you don't need to add the adjective. I'm, I'm just um, doing that to show you how an adjective brings it alive. So could you label the drawing now? Got that? Great. Here are the answers. The beak, the wings, the limbs or legs, the talons, feathers, eyes. Did you get all those body parts? Great. Here you see the mighty eagle once again. You've listened to the description of an eagle. You've watched a video that has an eagle in it. You've drawn it, an eagle and you've labeled it. So as we get to the end of this listening and speaking lesson, I would like you to describe this eagle. I want you to use the template that we've been using all along. As you describe it, start off by mentioning its name in a full sentence. Mention which group it falls under for eating habits. For example, is it an omnivore or a herbivore? Then describe the eagle using your five senses to describe the body parts. Use adjectives. Talk about what you see. Look at those enormous wings. Look at the curved beak and the sharp eyes. Look at the powerful talons. Imagine what you would hear as those wings flap. What sort of cry would the eagle make? If you had to touch that eagle, what would it feel like? Describe your eagle and then mention what you like about it. I'm going to give you some time now to practice. Finished? Great. Now what I'd like you to do for homework is to describe the eagle using Flipgrid. We've talked about Flipgrid before, haven't we? I would love to hear your description. All you need to do is go to www.flipgrid.com and then where it says Add a flip code, type in this code, 27C95C7F. Do you want to write that down? 27C95C7F. That will take you straight to the Flipgrid grid. All you need to do then is click the plus sign that you see in front of you and give your verbal description of the eagle. I'd love it if 
I had to hear you describing your eagle. Here is the Flipgrid code again. 27C95C7F We've come to the end of our lesson. Let's review what we've done today. You worked from week 3 and 4 of the CAPS curriculum for listening and speaking. You looked at a picture of a bird and you described it. You watched a video on birds and you took notes. You took part in a discussion about birds. You played a language game on the topic of birds. You listened to descriptions of different birds and identified them. You identified similarities and differences relating to birds. You followed instructions, you drew and labelled a bird, you identified different parts of the body of a bird, and you looked at some vocabulary from today's lesson. Well done, everybody, well done. Here are some activities for you to try out this week. First of all, get into the habit of practising describing birds and animals using the method you learned about today which is using your five senses to describe them. Think about making a bird feeder for the birds in your area. Visit the How to Draw an Eagle page. The eagle that we drew today came from this page. And if you want to watch the video again, it's called Birds Educational Video for Kids on YouTube. I'd like to invite you to the next lesson on Wednesday. On Wednesday, we'll be doing a reading lesson for Term 2, Week 3 and 4. In this lesson, you will read and summarize information text. See you there! That brings our listening and speaking lesson to an end. Thank you very much for joining us. If you are on social media, follow us on the hashtag LockdownSchool. Bye-bye.